next here on Golden West Television. After 52 years, the Olympic Games returns to Los Angeles. Hello and welcome to Network 10's coverage of the Games of the 23rd Olympiad. Coming to you live from Los Angeles. During the next 16 days, we'll be bringing you 315 hours of the Games. Now back in 1932, the splendor of the Games was confined to the 92,000 people who could fit into the Colosseum. But with today's technology, it's estimated that the spectacle of the 1984 Olympics will be seen by two billion people around the world as Los Angeles and Hollywood come alive. Almost in the shadow of the Hollywood sign, the International Broadcast Center, the complex through which the world will see and hear the story of the Los Angeles games as they happen. Assembled is the greatest collection of radio and television outlets ever seen, the media to carry the story to the largest audience ever. It will also highlight Los Angeles, host to the 23rd Olympiad and one of the world's remarkable cities. Its population is equal to that of Australia and it's the second largest city in the United States. Because of its hot dry climate, its lifestyle and its opportunity, Los Angeles continues to grow and change. It's a dramatically different place to the isolated, insular town that hosted the Olympics 52 years ago. Los Angeles has been called a truly 20th century city, and it's built for and around and is entirely dominated by the automobile. There are more cars in this state than in any country in the world apart from the United States. is one of the most ethnically mixed cities in the world but the thing it's known best for is its entertainment Los Angeles lifestyle is fast and frantic extrovert and creative glittering and garish and it exports its culture its creativity its eccentricities to the four corners of the earth Everybody knows the face of Los Angeles, so when it turns Olympic host, it's all very familiar. Entertainment is the industry that made this enormous metropolis its lifeblood. If nothing else, the Los Angeles Games will be show business at its very best. Well, Fast and Furious is certainly the way to describe Los Angeles life. The official opening ceremony is scheduled to start at 4.36 Los Angeles time. It's now about five minutes past four. For a rundown on the, the ceremonial side of the proceedings, let's cross out to the Coliseum and Charles Slade. Good morning, Australia, and welcome to the sun-drenched Los Angeles Coliseum, focal point for these Olympic Games. The Olympic Games, of course, are all about competition, tradition, and ceremony. And it's going to be my pleasure today to take you through the official side of the opening ceremony. And that will include the arrival of the official party led by President Ronald Reagan. 
We'll also see the handing over of the Olympic flag and the raising of that flag by a group of very distinguished former Olympians. And we'll also see the taking of oaths by the athletes and officials. And then the moment we've all been waiting for, the arrival of the Olympic torch and the lighting of the Olympic flame. As yet, we don't know who will be carrying that torch, but before too long, all will be revealed. Lots of guesses as to who's going to be carrying the torch. 140 nations are represented here, and those athletes will all march into the Colosseum this afternoon. Bruce McAvaney and Bob Harnett are out at the Colosseum, and they're going to give us an idea of what we, what we can expect and some uh, insight into the Australian team. Well, John, there'll be more than 8,000 athletes, a record number in the Colosseum in about an hour's time. The Australian team is a strong one. There's more than 250. We have our obvious stars, Dean Luke and Robert De Costello, Chris Cairns and our hockey team. The other exciting feature of the games from an athletic point of view is the introduction of the Chinese team. A marvellous high jumper in zoo, some great gymnasts, some great divers. We've got the great British team and we've got the ever so strong United States team where perhaps we'll see the superstar of them all from 1984, Carl Lewis, who should emulate Jesse Owens and win four gold medals in track and field. Yes, we've got 140 teams in all, and they'll be led into the Olympic arena by Greece, the traditional leaders of the parade. What better country, the traditional home of the Olympics. The teams will then follow in alphabetical order as their countries dictate, and in that scheme of things, Australia will be sixth into the arena in about three and a half minutes' time after the parade starts. The parade itself is due to run for one and a quarter hours. I can just about promise you it will run for one hour and 15 minutes. Everything here in L.A. goes to clockwork. And the last team into the arena, the host country, the United States. If this magnificent Coliseum had a roof, the roof would come down. Di Morrissey and Ken Burslem will be covering the entertainment side of this extravaganza. And Di, this is going to be a spectacle to be remembered. It certainly is, John. Los Angeles is, of course, the show business capital of the world, so we're expecting the show to end all shows today. The top names in American entertainment industry have contributed their talents to bringing this show to us. And, of course, I think we're going to see some absolutely spectacular dance routines, everything from jazz ballet to swing to Busby Berkeley routines to uh, just, uh, just any kind of music, hoedown, breakdancing. It's all going to be here. And, of course, the music of America will play a very important role in this opening ceremony. Money, we'll be able to enjoy the music of the blues to big brass bands to the more emotional hits of recent American musicals. And I think emotion is going to play a very big part in this ceremony because the music, the costumes, the atmosphere has all been calculated to target our heartstrings. And no matter how cynical you may be, there'll be a moment or two when I think you'll feel a tug at your heartstrings. Right, Ken? Yes, the uh, ceremony's executive producer, David L. Walker, said his ambition was to make it a lump in the throat spectacle it'd be more emotional than anything in the past so he assembled a cast of 10,000 he auditioned for it some of the most handsome young men and women in California and he involved the finest producers and choreographers that he could find in the nation so it'll be interesting to see how this combination of talent goes across how dramatically it sets the tone for the athletes before they start their competition well I saw the rehearsal the other day and it was something to be remembered believe me We'll be back after this break with a talk with some of the Australian athletes. IBM Personal Computer Until now, there have been only two places in the world where IBM has built personal computers. Now, there's another. Australia. So now, Australians have a stake in a sunrise industry. And soon, Australia will have a valuable new export. Hmm, IBM, Songsai Thamnai America. In the first modern Olympics, an English tourist joined in the tennis tournament. And one. When the English
individual can break through the system, great things follow. For us, the game has just begun. Harry's Win Your Wings is here again with double trips to Alice Springs plus hundreds of other prizes to be won. Save on Jason Recliner Rockers. First release specials are $299 and $369. Inga's Twin Tub Washers are a low $229. From Lounge Makers, this three-piece lounge suite at $699. Or this Riviera Modular setting, $789. Shop at Parry's and match the prizes on your Win Your Wings ticket. You could be a winner too. See full details every day in the Daily News. That's Parry's. Is there life after Wandon Valley for Larray Desmond and Grant Dodwell? Find out in TV Week this week. Get the inside story on shock lovers Joan Collins and David Hasselhoff. Discover Debbie Newsom's death-defying hobby and read about the TV beauty who spent a year in jail. Only in TV Week. Has middle age caught up with Mick Jagger? Find out in an exclusive interview. Corporal Klinger from MASH tells why he's gone straight. There's a super Bruce Springsteen pinup and your chance to win a trip on the Orient Express. It's all in this week's TV Week. Packed with great family entertainment. Well, one of the greatest honours that an athlete can have is to be chosen as the flag bearer for their country. We're fortunate to have Graeme McNeese out at the Olympic Village every day from dawn until dusk. And Graeme was at the ceremony where it was announced who will be the Australian flag bearer. Here's his the report. team is summoned for this time-honoured meeting. All are present except those committed to late afternoon training. There's an air of uncertainty as to who will be chosen for this honourable duty. The task is not an easy one. The guest of honour is the Australian team mascot, Willie. Spirit is at an all-time high, spurred on by a continuous stream of well-wishes from back home. One here which reads, my wife and I join with all our fellow Australians in wishing all members of the Australian Olympic team success in their forthcoming events. The whole of Australia will be watching you with pride and encouragement. Ninium M. Stevens, Governor General of Australia. Many of these athletes have experienced Olympic fever before. The others are tasting it for the first time. Justifiable recompense for the years of sacrifice and pain just for a chance to represent their country in the ultimate sporting event. There's a special warmth between officials and competitors. And then the announcement everyone is waiting for. There have been five members of his family compete. And this is his third Olympics. He has already won two medals at two previous games. And the person, unfortunately, who's not here is Wayne Roycott. This is the Los Angeles Olympic Village, and there's an air of excitement as our athletes prepare for the curtain to rise on the ultimate sporting event, the 23rd Olympiad. The majority of Australians will shortly share in the walk of a lifetime as they march for their country in the opening ceremony. Um, well, it's really hard to describe, but I'm, I'm just so pleased. It's been a long wait and everyone's been so excited. So I just can't wait to get out there. Oh, yeah, very much, because, you know, this is my third Games and I've never had a chance to march because the 100 metres backstroke's always been the first day, but uh, this time they've changed it around, so I'm just, like, thrilled. I'm really excited about it. Well, I hope it's going to give me a really big buzz and I'm looking forward to waving to everyone back home. Really excited, but the only shame is we can't march today because we swim tomorrow. But we'll have our own fun, I think, won't we, Sue? Yeah, we're going to have a party and go dressed up in our uniforms and just, I don't know, march around and just have fun of our own. Well, all I can say is it's hard to fight back the tears when you, you know, when you walk on, onto the stadium and everybody's cheering and the crowd's roaring. It is a tremendous feeling. It's very hard to explain yet. Yeah, I think you have to be there to understand what it feels like. It's, it's, it's fantastic. It's something you don't forget, you know, like I marched at Moscow, but I think this will be even better. Like the Americans always outdo the, the Russians, so it'll be really fantastic. It's a little unreal still, until after the opening ceremony, I think you still feel that you're up on cloud nine. I'm starting to feel tremendous. The adrenaline's really starting to pump. Everyone in the village is just getting sort of so psyched up for the race and uh, for all the events and the opening ceremony and stuff like that. And I just can't wait. It's sort of pretty hard to get to sleep after I'm thinking about it. To march on for Australia in an opening ceremony at the Olympic Games is a real honour and I'm looking forward to it something with a, where 100,000 people are going to be watching and uh, TV cameras everywhere and a great show and, you know, spectacular things happening. It's, it's something that you really look forward to. Pretty well over I think. We've been told that it's the greatest 
thrill of a lifetime and that's what we're really hoping it will be. I marched in uh, Montreal in 76, but I don't think that it's going to be anywhere near as good as uh, the one here. It's absolutely fantastic. Well, it's the uh, culmination, I guess, of four years' work and uh, a bit tense, but uh, you know, we've, we've been sailing for four years and we know what we've got to do and we've just got to do it. Fantastic. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it will be experience of a lifetime for me and being involved in the marching, the highlight of the game. Uh, I've been looking forward to it coming and now it's finally here. It's great. Traveled lonely roads of pain for a moment yet to be. Knowing in the journey each will find their own humanity. And they reach out to each other to make us all aware that we celebrate our brotherhood and the struggles that we share. I think the cutest thing was what young Sue Landell said. Can't you see them just marching around the room in, the, in their uniforms? <laughs> Our special uh, congratulations to Wayne Roycroft, who's been chosen as the flag bearer, and we'll be back with more after this break. That's Robert B. Costello. Right. And he's looking at the new Olympic edition Corona. <laughs> right. Uh, what do I say? Well, tell him about the rich new colours, and the plush new interior, and the roof rack on the wagon, and the digital instrumentation, and how it's a limited edition. Right. The special new Olympic edition Toyota Corona. Lovely car. Where do I sign? Right here. <laughs> Corona! To be the best is really what we're after. To merely make a show you'll never do. Serve and serve the best must bring us through. I think the Prince's is the warmest and most cheerful hotel in Perth. But then I'm biased, because it's my hotel. The Prince's has all the luxuries of a modern new hotel, and it doesn't cost the earth. There's everything for the business traveler and for people who just want to have a good time. It's all here and guaranteed to make you feel at home. It's in the center of Perth, and it doesn't cost the earth to Be aware. Join us for 60 minutes each Sunday from 7.30. Ray Martin, George Negus, Ian Leslie and Jan Avent form the team for this international magazine program featuring frontline coverage of the world's greatest current events. He's the Aussie tycoon behind all those bold black headlines. A man who influences millions. 60 Minutes, each Sunday night from 7.30 here on Golden West Television. Welcome back live from Los Angeles. The excitement is really building down at the Coliseum. But there's a tremendous pressure on our Australian athletes. And Mark Tonelli was able to go out and talk to some of them about their feelings. Welcome to the Olympic Swim Stadium. Today, the stands are empty. 
But tomorrow morning, the stands will be packed with 16,000 screaming people. Rosemary Brown, 1980 Olympian. How does the meet look? Mark, it's going to be a week of world-class performances. Certainly, every race is going to be a thrilling one. And Graham Windiat, 1972 and 76 Olympian. What about the Australians' chances? Australians coming into the meet as underdogs, but we've also had the longest to prepare for the meet, so we will do very, very well. Well, with the opening ceremony just hours away, the Australian team is having its last training session. Only a light one, as they're as ready as they're ever going to be. Some of the swimmers are marching in the opening ceremony, some aren't. The reason being that muscles can tire from standing in the sun for five hours, especially the muscles that have been prepared just to swim fast. George, you're going to march in the opening ceremony. How do you think uh, you're going to feel? Well, I marched in 980 and it was really good. It's just so exciting with all the atmosphere and everything. I'm really looking forward to it. It'll be just a great start to the Games. With the opening ceremony this afternoon and the 200 freestyle tomorrow, you march in the opening ceremony? No, I've decided against it. I was going to march originally, but now I've thought, you know, it's more important to not wake up the morning of the event and um, be stiff. And what about the opening ceremony itself? Walking around the inside of a track with tens of thousands of people cheering for you. How do you think that'll affect your performance? Oh, I think it can only help it. Um, I mean, the feeling, I don't know what it's going to be like, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be something that I'll probably never experience again. <laughs> Dimity Douglas, youngest member of the Australian swim team, 14 years old, with the opening ceremony this afternoon. Marching or not marching? I'll be marching. That's good. And how do you think it'll feel with uh, everyone watching at home and 100,000 people in the stadium? I think it'll be great. Neil Brooks, how are you going to go on this opening ceremony? Um, pretty quickly. I think I'll be marching right in time there. It's going to be really good. I'm really looking forward to it. Tops. And Greg Fasala? Well, it's my first Olympics and I'm looking forward to it. Michael Delaney? In front of all those people should be pretty exciting. And Mark Stockwell, do you think it'll hype up the team going into this uh, opening ceremony? I'm sure it will. I just want to wave to everyone back home. <laughs> well, being Los Angeles, you can imagine that out at the Coliseum today, the place will be packed with VIPs and star celebrities. Let's cross back out to the Coliseum now and talk to Di Morrissey and Ken Burslem about the VIPs and celebrities that we can expect to see. Well, gathered among the 100,000 people here, there are VIP celebrities and well-known faces, just too numerous to mention, gathered here from all over the world. But as well as the people, the city of Los Angeles is certainly in the Olympic spirit. They even designed an Olympic colour scheme of pink, purple and orange, which is actually more attractive than it sounds. And banners in those colours flutter along the streets from buildings. People have decorated their homes, the department store windows are all decorated. And in fact, people who live close to the Coliseum here are even today selling parking spaces on their front lawns for several hundred dollars a car. And immediately outside the walls of the Coliseum, there's something of a carnival atmosphere as all those Olympic-coloured uh, little tents and marquees stand out against the ivy-coloured walls of this lovely old building. And they're selling everything from hot dogs and souvenirs to cold drinks. But as well as the sights here, there are the sounds. They even compose special Olympic music for these games. Yes, this will be a musical as much as a visual experience based on some of America's finest. Names like John Williams, for example, the Hollywood John Williams who wrote the opening fanfare. Marvin Hamlish, he wrote the words of the opening song and he also wrote a chorus line, if you remember. And out of the venues too, they've commissioned their own special music. Here's an example. At the basketball, you'll hear the music of Bob James. At the boxing, Toto. Music of Christopher Cross adds atmosphere to the swimming. And at the gymnastics, they have Quincy Jones. music. Of course, we'll be hearing more of that later. 
When we come back after this next break, we'll be talking with marathon man, Robert DiCostella. shampoo comes a time when nature needs a little help to capture the very look of you enriched with precious mink oil mink difference not only cleans your hair but replenishes the oils that time and the elements steal away mink difference replenishing shampoo and conditioner will capture the very look of you it's like a new lease of life for your hair if the gut trigger flicks now Drench passes directly to the fourth stomach, where it only has around 12 hours to work. Nilverm enters the bloodstream, peaks and disperses in around six hours. And now there's a new low volume Nilverm. Nilverm LV, with an adult dose rate of only four mils. Nilverm LV, another reason why Nilverm keeps setting the pace. Your classic jeweler brings you Safari. Oh, gee, thanks, Brett. No, oh, darling, you shouldn't have. I'll never forget tonight. I do. And I do. Jewelry by Safari, available from your classic jeweller, Albany T&M Cyprian, Bunbury Mitchell's Jewellers, and Basildon Queen Street Jewellers. On Robert Di Costello, all Australia is willing him to win gold. Well, Dick arrived at Los Angeles Airport this morning, where Bruce McAvaney was able to catch up with him for this interview. Does a world champion go through periods of self-doubt, like a normal athlete? <laughs> I think everybody goes through periods of self-doubt, um, not only athletes, but uh, it's a matter of, of just having confidence, I think, in your program. I've got a lot of confidence in, in my coach and the people that support me. And, you know, I, I get a, a big lift from just being around them and from training and talking to them and you know that that helps a lot people in australia believe that this is the big one this is the ultimate you're, you're world champion you've won in brisbane for robert de Costello, is this the ultimate an olympic marathon certainly from a historical point of view any any athlete that hasn't won an olympic gold medal uh, is is lacking a little bit in his career uh, so it's something that I'd dearly like to do to really establish myself as you know, one of the greatest marathon runners of all time. Has that become important to you? Oh yeah, sure, yeah. You know, there, without trying to sound too arrogant, uh, there aren't a lot of challenges really left for me. I mean, I've beaten just about all of the top runners. I've, I've run an extremely fast time. Apart from, from the historical point of view, putting my, my name in... Uh, for putting it down forever, um, there really isn't a great deal else I can do. Do you see the fact that Seco's here and the other Japanese runners as a greater challenge here in Los Angeles compared with the other marathons that you've run in? Well, I haven't run against Seco for three or four years, so I'm really looking forward to, to that challenge. I think he's a, a remarkable athlete, and I'm sure he's going to run extremely well. And he's probably the athlete that I most respect in the race. I suggest that maybe if a kangaroo or someone broke away, you'd been able to reel them back in. But if, if Seiko yeah. broke away early, it hasn't been his style in the past. But is that something that would worry you? It's certainly something I, I have to be very uh, conscious of. 
um, I couldn't afford to let any of the, the favoured athletes get a, a large break because it would be very difficult to close that gap at the end of this race. Uh, for a start, there aren't any of the hills that we had in Brisbane. Um, and I think just the standard of the field is, is going to be much, much higher here. Um, but it, it's a matter of, of um, you know, drawing upon the circumstances that it happens under. Uh, if, you know, it's a matter of, of weighing everything up and, and, you know, trying to take an educated guess whether you should go with them or not. Your race is not for a, a couple of weeks. In fact, it's the last event in the Olympic Games. W yeah. What about the opening ceremony? Well, I've, I've been in, uh, I suppose, three or four major opening ceremonies at major championships now. And to me, it's, it's a real emotional high. It's a, it's a, it gives you a real lift. You know, it's one thing to be selected in the Australian team and you receive your, you know, your nice yellow blazer and your uniform and all of these little things. And you, know, you have your name in the paper as an Australian team member. But I think it's not until you really, you march into that, the Coliseum or the stadium and you, you realise that you're, you're there behind the Australian flag and there are thousands of people up in the stands and millions of people watching you on television that you really realise that you're here at the Olympics. And uh, it's, it's a, a really great thrill. Looks to me like Deke is ready to go. And also they're almost ready to go out at the Coliseum. Let's cross back out there now and join Charles Slade. Yes, as we can see, looking across the Coliseum now, this vast amphitheatre is now just about full, although in actual fact there are an awful lot of people still trying to get in here, even though the start of proceedings is imminent. You can see laid out in the centre of the Coliseum there all the uh, performers who are going to be involved in the opening production numbers. And uh, all in all, there's going to be some 10,000 performers uh, bringing you this show today. This Coliseum, of course, when it's absolutely full, holds just about 100,000 people. And I think even though people are stuck outside, pretty shortly they will all be inside. And then we're going to see, I think, a tremendous show. About uh, 85,000 people currently working for the Los Angeles uh, Organizing Committee. You may recall these games were commissioned on the basis that they had to make a profit. And the president of the LA OOC, Peter Yubaroff, looks like he's going to fulfill that requirement. The tickets here uh, for all venues now, there were some of them went a bit slowly, but most of them in actual fact have all been sold out. And I think we're going to find once the games begin, that uh, all the venues, uh, all the sports are going to be sold solid. But any second now, we're going to see a Hollywood spectacular with the proverbial cast of thousands. And we'll be coming back to bring all the colour and excitement to you in just a short moment. This is a typical first-class breakfast in Ansett's new aircraft. Orange juice, Warm crusty bread roll, light and fluffy scrambled eggs, uh, champignon, tomato, marmalade and butter, of course, and hot steaming coffee or tea. As I said, absolutely first class. Economy. What? Economy. Oh. Uh, apparently that was Ansett's economy class breakfast. Now, in first class... Ansett. Even our economy class food is first class. Ah, oh, much more like it. Now that's what I call the best of the fresh. Nothing less. In fact, the fruit and vegetables at Coles New World are now so good, so fresh, that this week we'll double your money back if you're dissatisfied. Now that's a quality guarantee. And will you check out the savings? A great buy on mushrooms, $4.89 a kilo. That's a saving. Cabbages, real value at 39 cents each. Save. And loose Granny Smith apples, 88 cents a kilo. You'll save. Check out the savings at Coles New World. Now, Tom's Tires, WA's number one tire chain, roar ahead with the number one deal on new Bridgestone Computer Cat 2. The new Computer Cat designed to tame Australian roads in all conditions. Plus, you get even more with the Black Sheep's Bridgestone Double Deal, an extra bonus on top of Tom's lowest price. What do you reckon, Barass? Here's where it all pays off. Look, I wouldn't risk my reputation on anyone I couldn't count on. And believe me, you can count on the Tom's Tires team for more. This week is Ambulance Week in Western Australia. It is designed to promote the service and emphasise the role, skills and training of ambulance officers. Our government supports this vital emergency service, but they also need your support in providing a truly dedicated group of workers with the latest technology and equipment. Throughout the week, officers, both paid and volunteer, will display ambulances and equipment at certain metropolitan and country shopping centres. Please support Ambulance Week. 
Hello again, Australia. There we have the Los Angeles Coliseum and all the performers still waiting expectantly to start this extraordinary opening ceremony. In 1932, the Olympic Games came to Los Angeles and everybody said it wouldn't work. All the Olympic Games till then had been held in Europe and they said Los Angeles was too far away. Not only that, America, indeed the world, was in the grip of the Great Depression. And everybody was expecting the 1932 Los Angeles Olympics to be a forgettable event. In the end, they turned out to be, until then, the finest Olympic Games ever staged. And today, on the eve of the 23rd Olympiad, this opening ceremony, I think, is going to set the stage for another equally memorable Olympic Games. I might give you some facts and figures about the opening ceremony we're about to witness, which uh, are typical of the size of this exercise. Later on, you're going to see not one, not two, but 84 piano players wheeled into this stadium. And to see how that's done, you'll have to wait. There's going to be a 1,000-member choir, 2,500 pigeons, 120 trumpeters, and a marching band of several thousand selected from universities and colleges around Australia. And right now, we can hear the opening fanfare to signal the start of the 1984 Olympic Games. There you can see the Olympic flame, which will be lit towards the end of this ceremony. And in that peristyle, the 1,000 voice choir and the 100 piece symphony orchestra. And above them, you can see the video screen on the left counting down to the kickoff. Three, two, one. Welcome to the opening ceremonies of the Games of the 23rd Olympiad at Los Angeles. is again proud to be the host of the Olympic Games. To the visitors assembled here today, welcome to our city. To the great athletes from 140 nations who are competing in these Olympic Games, welcome to our country. And to the viewing audience of two and one half billion that stretches around the world, a warm welcome from the citizens of California. That 
that's the message from the Los Angeles Coliseum and the 8 million inhabitants of this city to the rest of the world. and gentlemen. Out here, we like things that are made to last. Like this windmill. It's been going 30 years. And the dam's as old as the place. If anything's strong enough for this country, it's strong enough for me. After all, there's no sense spending money on something fancy that won't last. Of course, the cruise is new. Come back in 10 years and I'll tell you the story. Toyota Land Cruiser. What makes it number one in Australia makes it number one in the world. Gosh, that seems like yesterday. You know, we all can't get to Los Angeles to support our Olympians, but there's a terrific way that we can help cheer them on. It's called an OTC herogram. You can send one by satellite to any Australian team or member for $2 from any Coles variety, New World supermarket or Kmart. And if you lost the word, here are some ideas. You get this certificate and part of the $2 helps development of sport. Come on, Australia. Getting to sleep is difficult for many people, and others find it hard to stay asleep through the night. When sleep doesn't come easily, Horlicks can help. Medical research has proven that Horlicks' unique blend of natural ingredients in warm milk can help you sleep the whole night through. Good morning. Already? Oh, what a sleep. Horlicks. 
the natural way for a good night's sleep. 8.30 Thursdays, join us for Carson's Law. Australia in the 20s, a turbulent time when distractions, temptations and developments were plentiful and bewildering. A decade which began with ladies in whalebone corsets and ended with flappers in short skirts and the shadow of the Great Depression. Carson's Law is based on the private and professional activities of a female lawyer, Jennifer Carson, a woman before her time. Carson's Law, 8.30 Thursday, here on Golden West Television. National colours of the United States of America has just arrived at the southern end underneath the peristyle to signal the arrival of the official party, President Ronald Reagan Ladies leading and gentlemen, it. The President of the United States and Mrs. Reagan, accompanied by His Excellency, Mr. Juan Antonio Samaran, President of the International Olympic Committee, and Mr. Peter V. Uberoff, President of the Los Angeles Olympic Organizing Committee. and gentlemen, the National Anthem of the United States. marching band taking center stage here. These musicians and marchers selected from universities and colleges throughout America. And they're about to put on a spectacular precision drill display. We're starting to come into the main entertainment section of this 1984 Olympic opening ceremony. And to talk to you all about that, I'll hand you over now to Di Morrissey and Ken Burns. What we're hearing here is the uh, fanfare for the uh, common man. And the entertainment continues here at the opening ceremony as the All-American Marching Band presents this particular fanfare. It was composed by Aaron Copeland.
Ladies and gentlemen, we present the finest musicians from colleges and universities throughout the 50 United States. The Olympic All-American Marching Band. Olympic tradition calls for the host country to demonstrate to the world a sample of its music and dance from its early pioneer days to the popular contemporary scene. Every Olympic opening ceremony is committed to a certain amount of ritual, the format that has developed over the past 88 years, the torch, the entry of the flag, the Olympic oath, the march past of the teams and so on, but also provided as an opportunity for the host to put its own national imprint on the Games, to give the world something different to remember about Today the city we present a salute and about the these musical games. heritage of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, the music of America. That's what we're about to see now. We've heard a lot about the Hollywood Games. Here's how the United States will use the setting of Los Angeles and the Olympic occasion to present its own creative image to the world.
in marches and country hoedowns and in the music of the pioneer spirit we tell of building a new nation of creating one people out of many for looking at the size of this stage the center field of the majestic coliseum you can understand why uh, executive producer david walper has assembled a cast of literally thousands for this show of shows even a full-scale production normally seen in the theater on television would look woefully insignificant in this vast arena now, not only do the dancers have to enter and exit swiftly and professionally, they also have to arrange and set up their own backdrops as well and keep smiling. But then this is the home of Hollywood, where making things seem what they're not is part of Movie Town's magic. Pure Hollywood 2, the work of Ray Aguillan, one of the cinema world's foremost designers. And that's typical of all the performances you'll see this afternoon. The producers have called on the most creative minds they can find, from music coordinators to choristers to art directors to design consultants. If you read the end credits on Hollywood movies, you'd know many of the names well.
And now we're going to move from the Wild West to the biggest river in America, the Mississippi in the Deep South. As paddle wheelers traveled the mighty Mississippi River to the south, unique sounds came out of New Orleans. It was here that jazz was born.
is a Tahitian living in Darwin. And Stephen is a Hungarian living in Sydney. But today, Grace and Stephen have one thing in common. They will both be performing in the Shell Folkloric Festivals. Since they started 12 years ago, the Shell Folkloric Festivals have encouraged local groups to perform in public so that we can all see and enjoy the proud traditions of other countries. But before each performance, Guillermo Keys Arenas, the artistic director employed by Shell, makes sure each act is professional and authentic. From Ada Chardis at the Sydney Opera House, to an aparima in the Darwin Amphitheatre. All cultures have a part in Australia's future. And with events like the folkloric festivals, you can be sure Shell is helping. Confused about which freight company is best for you in the Southwest? Ever feel that it's like playing Russian roulette, picking the right company to use? Fed up with waiting for freight which just doesn't arrive? Well, do I have some good news for you. The one you want is Gascoigne Trading. They deliver on time, every time. And they take real good care of your goods. Gascoigne Trading. Delivering the goods on time. Give them a call. Wrap up your horses against the cold weather with WA's finest range of paddock rugs from Bait Saddlery. There's the tough Weatherbeater Superflex or Miracle Cordura with full warm lining and a matching hood is available. Super tough fully lined fighting flax is tremendous value. The cozy country is made from heavy ripstop superflax with extra deep lining. Weatherbeater stable rug also with matching hood completes the range and all are available by mail from Bait Saddlery Stores, 430 Newcastle Street, Perth. made its way from the streets of New Orleans to the finest concert halls of New York and inspired George Gershwin to create this American classic. grand pianos, 85 of them. Never before, we'll guarantee, have you seen pianos at an Olympic opening ceremony, and I don't think you ever will again.
In the wedding of image and sound, motion pictures created a new arena for song and dance, the Hollywood musical. From ballrooms across the nation, broadcast to the world by radio. Benny Goodman, Duke Ellington, Tommy Dorsey, Count Basie gave the downbeat to the era of big band swing. Well, in this swing medley, you'll probably recognize many old favorites. Take the A train, popularized, of course, by Duke Ellington. It don't mean a thing if you don't have that swing composed by the late Duke. And classics like Opus One by Cy Oliver, One O'Clock Jump by Count Basie, and Sing, Sing, Sing by Louis Prima. Great old-style dance, dance music, but I don't think Count Basie and Tommy Dorsey ever envisioned seeing it performed in quite this setting.
because everyone loves a long weekend. Budget gives you the chance of making every weekend a long weekend. Take off any time on any Thursday or Friday, and for the price of two days, we'll give you three days rental. Rent on Thursday or Friday, and you'll get three days rental for the price of two. One day free to really help you get away from it all. Budget's longer weekend rate, driving your weekend dollar further. Hi, I'm Sue Kellaway, and with Steve Liebman, I'll be bringing you the latest news, finance, sport, and weather each weekday morning on the Golden West Network. Eric Walters reports all the main news stories, and Brian Bury has the latest weather details. Wake up to what's happening with Today on the Golden West Network each weekday morning at 7 from August the 14th. television, radio and records, American music has become an international language that now belongs to the world. One singular sensation, every little step she takes. One thrilling combination, every move that she makes. One smile and suddenly nobody else will do. You know you'll never be lonely with you. No, who one moment in her present and you can't forget the rest. For the girl is second best to none. American institutions, not quite dancing, not quite marching. Every school has a drill team and the members of this massive one were chosen in a series of auditions in May. Amazing was the public enthusiasm to take part. They turned away applicants by the busload, all hoping for a tiny piece of Olympic opening day fame.
Frank. He's really in hot water. The new gun, Frankfurt from Watchoni, is in town. Yeah. Western Smokey, the tastiest Frankfurt in the West. Western Smokey! On your way, crook. There's no place in the West for a bad prank like you. Right, Slim? Shorty? Right, right on, Smokey! Smokey. We will the tastiest Frankfurt's in the West. Be there at 12 o'clock tomorrow as Bone Stock Day Clearance gets off to a flying start. It's an all-store event as you win gold on famous name fashion blouses just $14. Men's top brand fashion sweats just $15. Out go the housewares at half price. English porcelain dinner sets at $39.90. Crown Corning Vision cookware entire range at half price. Vienna glassware sets of six just $8.90. Hundreds of champion bargains throughout the stores at Bone Stock Day Clearance, 12 o'clock tomorrow. Tomorrow morning at the crack of dawn, get up and get into your Toyota dealer. Because Toyota Corolla price is now incredibly low, $6,995. July only. It's a Toyota Olympic sponsorship special offer. Toyota Corolla price this month is a fantastic low, $6,995. What a feeling to drive. Corolla at this price. Here they come. Warming up. Now it's Popeye and Pluto, peas and potatoes. Saturday's a problem, cause Harry just loves them. Saturday morning confusion. Saturday's full of intrusions. Better times. These Sunday times. Time for fun things to do, time to buy, see what's new, the best times. With the Sunday Times. Sunday for day. With the Sunday Times. progress of the Olympic torch which left Greece in early May, arrived in New York City on May the 8th and has been wending its way across America ever since. For 81 days in fact, covering 19,000 kilometers and traveling through 33 of the 50 states of America. As you can see everywhere it's been it's drawn a huge crowd and in the last week it's been here in Los Angeles and some 100,000 people a day have been turning out to watch the Olympic torch going by. up your card.
Ladies and gentlemen, a salute to the nations of the 23rd Olympiad. for 10 seconds and at the count of one you can bring them down 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 thank you of the Olympic Games is the exchange of the official Olympic flag. This flag was first presented in the 1920 Olympic Games at Antwerp and has been handed down to each city hosting the Games. Escorting the flag are two American athletes who were there on that historic occasion. Alice Lord Landon and gold medalist Eileen Riggan Soul both members of the 1920 United States diving team. Accompanied by His Highness Prince de Marode, member of the International Olympic Committee Executive Board and chairman of the International Olympic Committee Medical Commission. Carrying the flag is His Excellency Mr. Girondu Ndiaye, first vice president of the International Olympic Committee. is now presented to His Excellency, Mr. Juan Antonio Samaran, President of the International Olympic Committee. And on behalf of the City of Los Angeles, Mayor Tom Bradley accepts the flag and presents it to Mr. Paul Ziffin, Chairman, and Harry Usher, General Manager of the Los Angeles Olympic Organizing Committee. LAOC, a Los Angeles lawyer and senior official in the American Democratic Party. And may it fly proudly over the City of Angels during the games of the 23rd Olympiad.
ladies and gentlemen, to conduct the new American Olympic Orchestra in his original composition, the theme of the 1984 Olympic Games, Mr. John Williams. show you 200 passengers getting on ANSAT's new Boeing 767 because with our high-speed computerized check-in they're already on. We can't show you 200 passengers getting off our new Boeing 767 because with our twin aisle seating layout they're already off. And we can't show you 200 passengers waiting for their bags because our super fast baggage system got the bags off even faster than the passengers. ANSAT, the only airline in Australia with the Boeing 767. The only airline in the world with six-star service. The independent alternative is Adwood WA for timber and timber products. Joinery and hardware for builders and handymen. From their Jarrah and Pine Mills, Adwood supply a full range in both species. Seasoned, sawn and dressed timbers always stocked and their Jarrah line solid Jarrah entry and covered doors, door frames, garden settings and gates add beauty and function. Ply, chipboard and corrugated iron are at handy prices too. Power and hand tools, hardware supplies and experienced advice are at Adwood WA in Craigie Street, Bunbury, between Prophet Street and Boyan Up Road. Bunbury City Plaza, where Woolworth Supermarket and over 20 specialist retailers make your shopping relaxed and easy. The Golden Scissors, for the latest in hairdressing and individual styling. It's Plaza top quality fruit and veggies if you're after freshness and low prices. Mighty photos, mighty big prints at mighty low prices, and professional photography too. Treat yourself to the superb homemade cakes and pastries at the Forest Cake Shop. And for quality used furniture, the Plaza Marketplace is a bargain hunter's delight. You should be shopping at Bunbury City Plaza. The Miles Fuel Tanker, a sight seen increasingly frequently in the Collie area because Miles Southwest Fuel Supplies are now your local shell agents too. That means that apart from warming the cockles of your home at economy value, Ray Trudgeon can help you with all your fossil fuel requirements, from car to road train to home heating. Just give Ray a ring or pop into their depot in Atkinson Street, Collie, where you'll find the rest of the Miles team eager to help with your fuel requirements. Miles Southwest Fuel Supplies, shell agents for the Collie region in Atkinson Street, Collie, helping you drive home to somewhere warm. Oscar-winning composer John Williams conducting the Olympic Orchestra with his original theme, the Olympic theme. Okay. And the 
drill team in the centre of the stadium now taking up the formation called Stars in Motion, which is the official emblem of these games, and they signal the arrival of the real stars of this show, the athletes from around the world. They'll be entering the Coliseum shortly, and to tell you all about them, the teams from all over the world, some 8,000 athletes, Bruce McAvaney and Bob Harnett. Well, we've seen this, the showbiz side of the show, Bruce. Now for the athletics, the sports purists, the athletes from all over the world. 8,000 of them, 140 nations represented the biggest games ever. Unfortunately, Bob, not quite so warm today. It's a beautiful day in Los Angeles. It looked like being very hot halfway through the Ladies day. And gentlemen, from 140 nations, presenting the athletes of the games of the 23rd Olympiad. for a special country in the history of the Olympics, both modern and ancient, Greece. Greece. The Greek team being led into the arena by their great wrestler, the gold medalist in Moscow, Stelios Migakis. Athens, of course, host to the Games in 1896, the very first modern Olympiad, and then the interim Games again in 1906. African nation of 17 and a half million people, a team the strength of which lays in the strength and team sports. They're being led into the arena by one of their boxers, Mustafa Musa. Andorra. At the other end of the population scale, just two athletes from the tiny European state of Andorra which nestles in the famous Pyrenees Mountains. Their flag bearer, just one of two, Juan Thomas Rocker, and, and he's a trap shooter. A warm reception in Los Angeles for the first of many of the Caribbean countries taking part in these games of the 23rd Olympiad. And like so many of the Caribbean countries, rich in track and field talent. Mr. Benjamin, their flag bearer, he's a sprinter and long jumper. Argentina. Argentina hasn't won a gold medal at the Olympic Games since 1952. In fact, Argentina hasn't won a medal since 1972. If they're to win one this time, perhaps it'll be through one of their boxers. What a special moment this is about to be. Number six, in order, alphabetically. I'm sure we're going to get a great cheer. I was correct in my prediction about three and a half minutes into the parade. Australia. What can we say, Bruce? 266 athletes competing in 19 sports. What a great reception for Australia. A friendly, warm reception. These are the friendly games. Our flag bearer, Wayne Roycroft, a famous Olympian family. Five members of the Roycroft family have been to the Olympics to compete for Australia. This is Wayne's third, and he has twice won medals. And don't they just look great? They look fabulous, Bruce, and they're, they're keyed up, they're ready to go. A special tribute with Wayne carrying the flag to his father, Bill, who won gold in Mexico for Australia, riding with a broken collarbone. The affair, Olympics, for the Roy Crofts. Waving to this huge crowd. Girls looking magnificent, splendid. Very, very sensibly dressed, the males. And 
the Australians with the hats. Some great track and field and swimmers and weightlifters. Robert De Costello's there and Dean Lucan. Bruce All the other people. Australia's won 64 gold medals so far in its Olympic history. I dare say by the time these games are over, that, that number could well be up around 75. name in trucks leads again presenting toyota hilux four-wheel drive starring extra cab extra room extra star oh, what a feeling. tough toyota hilux with extra performance and the ground clearance you need so i go where i want oh, what a feeling. tough toyota hilux taking the truck world by storm somebody did it right again oh, what a feeling. hilux toyota. Which furniture retailer can show you an entire range of superb lounge suites? Or an entire collection of elegant dining suites? Or perhaps an entire range of bedroom suites and wall units? Which furniture company has massive buying power with three large showrooms, giving you the most competitive prices in town? Only one. The entire furniture company of Eastwick Park, Mantua and Bunbury for the entire range of quality furniture. Announcing Bunbury's greatest ever suit sale on now at Bon Marche Men's Land. Save up to 50% on your suit from the Southwest's largest and finest range. Many quality suits have been discounted to just $99. Every suit at Bon Marche Men's Land is reduced by at least $30. Classic styles, fashion styles, a suit for everyone at prices that will leave the racks bare. So see the friendly staff at Bon Marche Men's Land soon and save on that new suit during Bunbury's greatest ever suit sale. Australia's top quiz master gives contestants the chance to win exciting prizes ranging from motorbikes to yachts and luxurious limousines. Tony Barber, together with the vivacious Delvine Delaney, host Sand of the Century each weeknight from 7 on Golden West Television. Money didn't need it, but he got it and went to 64. Join us for tops in entertainment from 7 o'clock each weeknight for Sale of the Century here on The Entertainers, Golden West Television. The team we're watching now, marching past these 100,000 people in the LA Coliseum, is that of Belize, only a small team, as the first of the Central American countries, formerly British Benin. Honduras. And their fellow by Benin, a Western African state with a population of just over 3 million, and their team is made up of boxers. Bermuda is a name that's attracted worldwide attention, mainly for its mysterious triangle. As for its athletes, well, we can only wait and see over the next fortnight. The high jumper, Clarence Saunders, is bearing the flag. What a colourful and magnificent sight this is. Bhutan. Well, here's one of the countries making its first appearance at an Olympic Games. Bhutan, a tiny little country at the base of the Himalayas. They're sending a team of six. They're all archers. Three men and three women. Bolivia. Well, from Asia back to South America and the team from Bolivia. Some of the teams look a little depleted in numbers. That's because some of the athletes, some of the competitors aren't marching today because they're competing tomorrow, quite sensibly. It's pretty hot down there in the Colosseum for them, but as I said, not quite as bad as we first thought because it's six o'clock now in California. And the sun is not quite as strong as it was an hour or two ago. Botswana, well, according to the lyricists, it never rains in Southern California. It doesn't in Botswana either. In fact, they measure their currency with Brazil. the rain. Yes, yes ironically, ironically, though, Bruce, the, uh, the sport that Botswana is best represented in here at the Games is sailing. 
Well, from the heartbeat of South America, the Brazilians, a powerful and vibrant team of competitors. Australia faces Brazil first up in the men's basketball competition. I was talking to the Olympic Network commentator for our basketball, Phil Lynch. He said we can only wait and see and cross our fingers there. He's hopeful, though. And Ray Moss, the flag bearer, a basketballer and for track and field enthusiast. Brazil has a wonderful runner. Cruz, the 800 meter champion, and he's going to be hard to beat in the Coliseum in a week's time. One of the biggest teams, Brazil, close to 200. Looking splendid in their uniform. Great shot of the Coliseum. British Virgin Islands. From the powerful Brazil to one of the smallest countries in terms of population. Just 10,000 people in the British Virgin Islands. A veteran sprinter, Lyndall Hodge, carrying the flag. Burma. Well, we go to a largely populated country now. 33 million people in Burma, but they're only represented by one here at the Olympics. Their boxer, Zorlat. It was a unanimous decision who'd carry the flag for that country, Bruce. Cameroon. I'm certainly glad he showed up today. Well, Cameroon, the sports enthusiast, made their name in the 1982 World Soccer Cup with some magnificent performances in Spain. They're not in the Olympic football competition, surprisingly, and an official of the Cameroon is, in fact, their flag bearer. They're strong in numbers. Very formal in dress. Bruce, if my literacy is correct, stand by for a big roar from this big crowd. An enormous roar from a large percentage of the 100,000 spectators here. This is the second biggest team of these games. Too many medal prospects to enumerate in, in a little short space of time that we have available. Just suffice it to say, you think of a sport, the Canadians have a strong contender. And perhaps their swimmers, Victor Davis and Alex Bowman, the two world record holders, will be two of the great stars of this, the 23rd Olympiad. Bruce, they'll be hoping to cap off their careers with, with the greatest honour of them all, an Olympic gold medal. They go right across the board, the Canadians, represented in practically every sport. Traditional rivals of Australia in Commonwealth Games competition with their marvellous sprinters and great relay runners. And, of course, their powerful swimming team. They're strong and equestrian. Nearly 500 in strength, and their uniforms there resemble the Canadian flag, don't they? It's the red and the white. By the time they all get out here, they'll, they'll just about stretch the entire length of the 100 metres straight. If you think that's large, wait for the Americans at the end. Well, you've got about an hour to wait for that. As I said before, if this place had a roof, it would come down. Well, in stark contrast to the enormity of the Canadian team, a small delegation from the Cayman Islands, and more than half of the nine members are cyclists, including a woman cyclist, Marilyn Phillips, Carson Ebanks, in fact, the flag bearer. Marilyn will be in the very first women's cycling race at the Games. I know the heat here in Los Angeles has knocked a few of the athletes from the colder countries around in the past week or so. I shouldn't think these teams from Central Africa would have uh, too much to worry about. Another small delegation, that from Chad. They're only competing in one sport. What a contrast, Bob, between Chad and Central Africa in their uniform. from one of the world's largest copper-producing countries come the Chileans. They're about 60 in strength, and they'll be hoping their football team can perform like an alchemist, really, and bring home some gold. is in the making, Bruce, in more ways than one.
the next team is perhaps the People's most historic. Listen to that reception, Bruce, a magnificent moment for the Olympic movement for the first time a team from the most populous nation on earth. They're largely an unknown quantity, but some of the Chinese athletes have already stood out in international competition. Looking led by their basketballer, he's six foot seven. In American terms, that's Li Bim Wang. I was lucky enough to see Zhu, their world record high jumper, jump during the week in California. It's a sight to behold, and there's a chance he may set a new world record at the Coliseum in the next eight or nine days. We've seen their gymnasts and their divers in Australia. A super sight. And a magnificent reception, a fitting reception. Robert B. Costello. Right. And he's looking at the new Olympic edition Corona. <laughs> right. Uh, what do I say? Well, tell him about the rich new colours. Mm, and the really plush new interior. Yeah. And the roof rack on the wagon. And the digital instrumentation. <laughs> and how it's a limited edition. Right. The special new Olympic edition Toyota Corona. Lovely car. Where do I sign? Right here. <laughs> Corona! G'day. The mate Jimmy's invited me to dinner, so I'm making something special. Spaghetti. Now, don't overcook it. It must be just firm. That's called al dente. Now, where's the cheese? Australian cheddar, of course, because I reckon it's better than the imported stuff. Handful and a half of Aussie cheddar, some butter, some chives. Toss it, some more cheese, and serve it hot. Jimmy, you'll love it. Ah, you bring a spaghetti, please, Start, fishermen start. never oh, agree. That's kid stuff. Neither the game fishermen. Right off me boat. It's all that fishing. Yeah. The fly blokes. All in the wrist. Or all the rock hoppers. But fresh water or salt, the you one thing they do agree the about is the Encyclopedia of Australian fishing. Why? Because all the secrets and skills are in here every week, building into a library of good advice. So can you tell these experts anything? This encyclopedia does. Agreed? Yeah. Trevor's Heating and Cooling in Spencer Street have a heating range that's sure to suit your needs. They're agents for the renowned Kent range, which are up to four times as efficient as open fires. Match your decor with a tile fire. The log fire, created to fit into existing fireplaces. Or heat two rooms at once with the duo fire. Trevor also handles the stack range of heaters, pot bellies by one dowie, and gas space heaters. For supply, installation, and service of all kinds of domestic heaters, see Trevor's Heating and Cooling in Spencer Street. Dominican Republic. seen the Dominican Republic go past. Uh, they're traditionally strong in boxing. But while the Dominicans will be firing off lefts and rights, with the Ecuadorians will be shooting all manner of firearms. The country's forte is marksmanship in just about all the Olympic disciplines. The Ecuadorian team and flag bearer. Egypt are fielding the largest team ever, more than a hundred. It's the first time we've seen their swimmers in a long time too. Rather disadvantaged in Egypt, there's not very many covered swimming pools in that country, so the, the Egyptian swimmers must train with the general public, which makes it pretty hard on their coaches. And one of their champions, Mohamed Suleiman, the basketballer, he was the top scorer in the African Championships in Cairo last December. This stadium beginning to fill up with athletes, already fallen alive with spectators. El Salvador. Only a small delegation from the Central American country being 
led into the stadium by their sprinter, the only female in the team. about the view that Bob and I have in the stadium at the moment. High in the stand, as we see these great athletes marching about 500 metres around the stadium. From the 800 islands of Fiji, a small 1,000 island sprinkling of that country's finest. Got some chances in judo. Their flag bearer in that sport and wearing the traditional dress. Well, the Finns were the host country for the famous games of 1952. Finland renowned for its flying Finn, Pavo Nurmi. The equally great distance runner, Lassie Viren. Yes, Viren and Nurmi, and of course, javelin throwing is a national sport in Finland. It's almost the heart and soul of track and field, the Finns. And they've got the world record holder here, Tina Lilak. reception for the French too and while Greece is considered the home of the Olympics perhaps the title saviour of the game should best describe France if it wasn't for the vision and the determination of Baron Pierre de Coubertin in the late 19th century we wouldn't be looking at this spectacle today they're a strong team and leading the parade Parisi who's won two judo medals a gold in 1980 and a bronze in 72 great sight the French in this blue and grey the big representation nearly 300 from france got some great pole vaulters temperamental but brilliant the bar. The bar. into one of the former french colonies in equatorial africa in stark contrast only a tiny delegation Well, the story going around the Olympic Village this morning is no athlete wanted to carry the flag for Gambia. Not that they didn't consider it an honour, they, they figured it was too tiring. They must be serious about their chances. <laughs> they must be competing tomorrow too, Bruce. Federal Republic of Germany. Here's another of the powerhouse nations. They've got the potential to take home a big, heavy bag of medals. You can't mention Germany without talking about the great decathlete Jürgen Hinkson, or the, the dynamic, the versatile swimmer Michael Gross. Yes, Hinkson and Daly Thompson's clash in the decathlon. Later in the track and field program will be one of the great highlights of these Olympics have been led into the stadium by Willie Kui, the yachtsman in Soling. Peter Michael Cole be a great single scholars in the team. He's won four world championships, but never an Olympic gold. Number of magnificent high jumpers. Huge delegation. Like the Canadians and the Australians, they go right across the board. Superb pursuit team in cycling. Of course, hosts of the Games in 1972. And also back in 1936. small delegation from Ghana. It's interesting to reflect on, history, on Olympic history a little bit. In the first ever Games in 1896 in Athens, 13 nations competed. There were 311 competitors. Here in Los Angeles in 1984, 140 nations and nearly 8,000 competitors. Great Britain. Yes, another multifaceted, multi-talented team. Their soul, too, is, is in track and field. Sebastian Coe, Daly Thompson, great decathlete. Alan Wells, Steve Ovet, 
they're all returning to defend their Olympic titles. And they're bringing with them the little lass who had to renounce her South African citizenship to, to realize her dream of competing for Olympic glory, the little barefooted Zola Bud. We tried to have a look through um, the British team with my binoculars. I haven't seen Zola yet. I'm not sure if she's marching. Her clash with Mary Decker later in the games will have this similar sized crowd roaring their heads off. Lucinda Green, well known to Australians, winner of the badminton equestrian title on more than one occasion, leading the parade. Yes, yeah, certainly they're the princess of the equestrian events. Gee, the atmosphere, Bruce, as, as the stadium fills, it's just getting more electric by the moment, isn't it? Sea of colour, smiling faces and happy people. What am I? Yes, there's little doubt this will be the friendly games, the colour the color scheme for the games. They've chosen soft colours, colours that didn't really strike the eye at first impression, but, but they're growing on, on me, Bruce. They're, they're soft and they're warm and they're friendly and they really do epitomise the feeling of these games. Guatemala to Guinea. It's a much smaller delegation than the Guatemalans, all in single file. And there is a sea of athletes in the centre of this Coliseum. Well, here's another one of those Calypso cricketing countries. In fact, the home of Clive Lloyd. Not a lot in the way of Olympic history. Ghana's first ever gold medal. Not a gold medal, in fact, it was a bronze. That was one in Moscow only four years ago. We've already seen the Dominican Republic and sharing a Caribbean island with them and the athletes from Haiti. The athletes singular, I should have said. Andy track and field, cycling, judo and swimming, Carlos Soto has the honour of being the flag bearer for his country. Hong Kong. Well, in terms of trade and enjoyment and holiday and recreation, perhaps one of the best known names in the world, Hong Kong. A strong delegation in number. Almost 50, led by Solomon Lee. Iceland. Well, despite the obvious disadvantage of its geographical location, Iceland is building a strong and fairly versatile team. They've got a big metal chance with their javelin thrower, one of the Jamsen. Yes, well, the Lansom Tech lives in the United States. He goes to college here. He threw a national record earlier this year, and he's a chance, that's for sure. You think of India, you think Olympics, and you think hockey. They won every gold medal up until 1960 until Pakistan broke that winning sequence. They've gone through the doldrums in terms of success since then, but they're back as a force and one of the big chances against Indonesia. Australia later in the hockey tournament at this is the 23rd Olympiad. Well, a much smaller team from the, the fifth most, most populous country in the world, Indonesia, building fewer than 20. Fantastic uniforms. Don't think I'd like to wake up to that first thing in the morning. Iraq's very much a strong man sporting nation. The boxers and wrestlers will do well. Should be used to the, the heat of a Los Angeles summer and Ishmael Khalil is the flag bearer. Is Ronald Reagan giving a special cheer? <laughs> I think he's got a few of his supporters giving a special cheer as well. A great cheer for the Irish. A great day for the Irish. 
lucky enough to run into Eamon Coughlin during the week. He's the world champion 5,000 metre runner, not running here, but we'll be doing commentary, Bob. He shouldn't be all that far from us at the Coliseum. The Irish flag being borne by Captain Jerry Mullins. He's one of the equestrian team members. cheer from around the stadium indicates there's a big expatriate population here. Israel's never won an Olympic medal. They might just have an outside chance at a bronze with their 800 meter runner Mark Handelsman in these games. He really epitomizes his country. He's a, a mini League of Nations in himself. He was born in South Africa, now living in the USA, probably why the cheer, and he's representing Israel. Excellence. The really powerful nations in Olympic competition. In the traditional blue. The Italians led by Sarah Simeone, high jumper, who was second in Montreal in 76 and then broke the world record in Moscow in 1980 when she won gold. Pietro Maneo will probably be out there, their 200 metre gold medalist and world record holder. Presented in over 20 sports at this is the 23rd Olympiad. A couple of top chances in the marathon. Some excellent shooters and fences. The tie of the red and green colours and of course blue and the white. a small representation We've got a very good athlete in Gabriel Tierco he ran second in the 400 meter championship behind Darren Clark being led by Naibun Aragoni We've got canoeists and judo players perhaps their best chance though in the 400 meters Jamaica. He's a country famous for us rum punches, but it's sprinters also pack a punch. Running here, the world 400 meter champion, Bert Cameron. There he is, Bob. The man who won the Commonwealth Games gold medal in Brisbane in 1982 in the World Championships in Helsinki. And the man for Darren Clark to beat in the 400 if Clark is to win a medal. And also during the week, we'll see the grandfather of Olympic sprinting in Don Quarry and the sensational Merlin Otty. Don Quarry started his Olympic career in 1968, was injured in Mexico, won a gold medal in 76, has competed, well he's been picked to compete at five games and he's back again. When the sun rises on the competition proper tomorrow, another nation with a host of medal chances, particularly in gymnastics, cycling, judo, wrestling, swimming. But the big emphasis, the big emphasis in Japan is on the performance of their marathoners. Seko and the twin brothers, so and so. And their flag bearer, Murafushi, he's not only the champion hammer thrower of Asia, he's also the champion flag bearer. He's been carrying the flag for the Japanese at every games since then, including 1972. I noticed in that interview with, uh, with Deke this morning, Bruce, that Seko's the one. Yes, he's got such a enormous kick at the end of the marathon and he no doubt will be looking for Deeks all the way and the pressure on Seco and also the so-and-so brothers has been as great as 
it has been physiques back home and i think if the japanese could win just one medal and had a choice it's no doubt it would be on the final day into the arena where just over halfway through this magnificent parade of athletes by the time we finish we'll have nearly 110,000 people in this beautiful beautiful Coliseum Kenya. well the Kenyans haven't been to an Olympic competition since 72 virtually wiped out a generation of Olympic runners by not competing in 76 and 80. Kip Kaino in 1968 in Mexico with that famous win in the 1500. The boxers are strong and that's one of them, James Amondi. They'll be strong in track, strong in the distance events, as always. have a special significance for Korea. Korea is the host for the next games in 1988. And perhaps this country could warm up with gold in 1984, particularly in women's archery and, and boxing. Setter Aluminium can make your home dreams come true with their functional, attractive and maintenance-free aluminium fixtures. Style Setter are not just the local manufacturers of Camalco windows and doors, they also have a wide range of reasonably priced glass accessories for your home. So with Style Setter you can design your home just as you want it. And no job is too big or too small for their efficient glass repair service. Call and see Trevor or Lynn and find out how you can make your home dreams come true with Style Setter Aluminium's products and glass accessories. You know, buying power tools is like buying a car. You need to shop around, consider your needs and budget. You can do all that right here at Cross Electrical Supplies Bunbury. Choose from seven brands of power tools, including Black & Decker, Ryobi and Makita, as well as a full range of air and nailing equipment, power plants, compressors, woodworking and sanding equipment. Everything tradesmen, handymen or farmers need in the way of quality power tools has been assembled right here at Cross Electrical Supplies Bunbury. You're looking for the perfect ironing of blind, the name that comes to mind, Delray. Want a cover for the boat of you, the top for the truck that's cute, protect your load with Delray. There's no worries when it comes down and the haystack sitting on the ground, should be right with Delray. And to keep the party going when the family keeps on growing, it's Delray. Just head on down, rip the road and cover up with Delray. Thank you all. Thanks very much. Yeah. Road paving is a sticky business, but Malatesta Road Paving and Hot Mix have got it down to a fine art. Malatesta specialise in hot mix, cold mix, driveway constructions, car parks, cycleways and subdivision roadways using premium grade local raw materials, modern machinery and laboratory facilities. When Malatesta's lay paving, it's there to stay, workmanship guaranteed. For all road paving and hot mixing, see Malatesta Road Paving and Hot Mix paving the way for the southwest. In centre screen at the moment, the flag of Liberia, a very distinctive flag, perhaps more widely known around the world, not so much for its athletes, because it seems half the ships of the world are registered in Liberia's capital of Monrovia. The last time the United States hosted an Olympics, this tiny country won two gold medals. It wasn't back in 1932, it was at Lake Placid in 1980 at the Winter Olympics. When Hani Venza was successful in the slalom and at giant slalom. Famous little country, Liechtenstein. Known by many, perhaps not everybody knowing exactly where it is, but a tiny little country in Europe. And their heptathlete and their youngest team in a Manuela Markson leading the Liechtenstein team onto this, the Col Colosseum. Another small delegation from one of Europe's oldest and smallest countries. The flag's being borne by the only woman in the team, Jeanette Georgian. She's an archer.
Madagascar. Centre field, the Coliseum. About half full now with athletes from some 70 or 80 countries have already made their way into the Coliseum. It's one of the Madagascan boxers leading the small team who have made up of track and field people and boxers into the stadium. Yes, you think the stadium's pretty full now. You wait till the Americans get here. These are the American games, these are the Hollywood games, and the Americans want it to be remembered as one in which they swept the board with gold medals. There's little doubt they'll win a lot. They'll win many of them, perhaps more than 80. Malaysia. Which is not to say that the Australians are laying down either, because we're going to take home a few. That man there is a free pistol shooter. That's one of the very first competitions at the Games. team from Timbuktu because that's where that famous name of a foreign place somewhere out in the middle of nowhere is. The four athletes, that's their track and field coach bearing the flag. The They're four. spreading themselves a bit thinly, Bruce. Is track and field judo and boxing for four of them. <laughs> they might be doubling up. Yes, well, Malta's sending about ten athletes and they're competing in five sports, so they've spread a bit thinly too. Peter Bonello, he's a strong wind glider. First time that sport's been at a game. What do you say? Blade, contested? What do you do with a wind, a wind glider? I guess you contest wind gliding. Much different costumes, about the same number, and just as happy entering the spirit of the 23rd Olympia. And we're about to get a really big cheer in just a moment because this is a big country about to follow Mauritius. Mexico. another big crowd reaction from the other of the American neighbors large Mex Mexican expatriate population here in Los Angeles we're not terribly far from the Mexican border they've got big chances Bruce perhaps in the marathon certainly in football in boxing yes and in the two distance walks the 20 kilometer and 50 kilometer got the favorites in both of those events I've got the Gomez boys will probably both run the marathon especially Rodolfo Jose will probably run the 10,000 as well Rodolfo Gomez, the person who chased Alberto Salazar when the American broke the world record. Well, you think of Monaco, you think of gambling, you think of Grand Prix, you think of Grace Kelly. Now, there's a, a very identifiable link between Hollywood and this competing country. Blake Vera, he'll be swimming in the 100 metres freestyle be in the wake of a few others but he'll be in there trying All right, well. well this is a real chance for morocco to win their very first gold medal in track and field in one of the glamour events the 1500 they have the fastest man in the world at 5000 and 1500 meters said uita uita ran third last year in the world championships he's more than three seconds faster than mike hillard who's the number two man at the moment in the 1500 and Waita will be running on the second last day of the competition. See the 
athletes are really enjoying this. It doesn't really matter what country you're in, the parade of athletes is a pretty standard formula. The curtain racer may be pretty spectacular, but this is, this is a standard formula and spectacular in its own right. The Nepalese, well, their kingdom's favorite, the Mount Everest. I think it's unlikely any of their athletes will reach the dizzy heights of the Victor's Day as they... Netherlands. Well, here's a country particularly strong in hockey and cycling and, well, several areas of track and field. Their 800-meter runner, Rob Droppers. The discus thrower, Ria Stolman. The marathoner, Gerard Niebuhr. Niebuhr was second in Moscow. Tony Bunk, he's a water polo player. This is his fourth Olympic Games. Netherlands and Chile. I don't know if from home you can pick the Australians out from that scene, but a fair way away from that camera high in the sky. Little country in the Caribbean. The representation of about a dozen. Everett Kroon. Carrying the blue, red and white flag. New Zealand. Well, we've talked about America's neighbours, now Australia's neighbour. Fortunately for us, though, good neighbourliness stops in the sporting arena. There's John Walker, the great 1500 metre runner, bearing the flag. Yes, there's nothing the New Zealanders like more than to beat Australia in, in sport. They've always been our nemesis in rowing and hockey. There's nothing the Kiwis like more than beating Australia. But it's a friendly competition. It will be a friendly game. I hope they're not upset when we beat them. Athletes from the land of the long white cloud, the land of John Walker. And lady in the wheelchair won a gold medal in Brisbane in the shooting. What a great moment that was for John Walker. One of New Zealand's all-time greats. From the New Zealanders to the largest country in Central America, there's somebody very, very happy. too sure but we thought they were going to play baseball but they weren't in the unofficial list but uh, that's of course being a demonstration sport of the games let's have a look at them through the glasses there's a few there that are at the right shape and size for baseballers been here a week and already know the size and shape for a baseball oh we know plenty about baseball in all, more than 8,000 athletes, both record-breaking statistics. Just a handful of athletes from the landlocked Niger, in Western Africa. They're Nigeria. fighters. This is a very strong country, Nigerian track and field, and that's Yusuf Ali carrying the flag. He was the world student champion in the long jump last year. In fact, they had a number of athletes who won gold medals at the World Student Games in Edmonton. Ali will be one of Gary Honey's biggest competitors of these games. Got a 200 and 400 metre sprinter with a rather unusual name who should make the final in whichever event he decides to run in. His name is Innocent Egba Nike. Well, we're talking about strong track and field countries. Here's a strong country. You can't get a lot stronger than Greta Bates. Great marathoner. Deke was training with her just recently, Bruce. He told me, uh, Rob, uh, Bob, today that uh, she's never been running better. He had a 22-mile training run with Greta in Norway recently, and he said that she pushed him all the way. And, of course, they have Ingrid Christensen as well. He's one of their most com experienced competitors, Alf Hansen. He won gold in 1976 as a double skulls rower. But with Christensen awaits both in the marathon, both with a big chance. First ever marathon, an historic event in the Games for the women. Well, an historic event for Oman too. This is their first ever Olympic Games. There's another name 
seems synonymous with hockey. A team that ended, ended India's winning run of Olympic gold. They didn't do a lot of favours for Australia in the final in 68 either. 78 it was, wasn't it? big team in fact when you consider they've got a hockey team playing a small representation from Pakistan oh. the sporting people when they think about Panama they think about Roberto Duran and their professional fighters the only Panamanian ever to win an Olympic medal was the sprinter Lloyd Le Beach back in 48 in London he was one of their weightlifters who won a silver medal at the Pan American Games last year Jose Diaz Lopez. He's obviously not lifting against Dean Lupin, looking at him from, from here. Papua New Guinea. Only a small delegation for Papua New Guinea. Reasonably strong in track and field and, and shooting. They do well in the South Pacific Games. It's a great side bomb. High in the stand. Yes, the athletes getting friendly already. Then all the countries talking to each other in the middle. Some days, things that normally require a simple effort take on an insurmountable aspect. And you just have to get a grip on yourself and hang on. Because you know that there's something that will make those mountains seem like molehills again. Bushel's instant coffee, with a blend of fresher roast beans to give you the flavor and satisfaction you need in your coffee. Mm. Bushel's instant coffee. Toyota Supra, a superb machine, a fine example of Toyota's quality and advanced engineering. The same technology applied throughout Toyota's huge range of cars and commercials, giving you style, comfort, durability and high resale value. Isn't that what you deserve for your money? Let me show you the best range of cars at Bustle and Toyota and I've got an Olympic winning deal for you. Watching the team from Puerto Rico, nearly 60 of them, they're competing in 14 sports. It's about two-thirds of the competition, 23 sports in all. Like Panama, Bob, they're the home of some great boxers, professional and amateur. in Southeast Asia is Qatar. Their athletes are here to compete in track and field, in shooting, and in soccer. They could be a bit of a dark horse in soccer too.
people had room to stand up, I think they would. That response is obviously in recognition to Romania's decision not to join the boycott, boycott and come and play in the friendly games. In 1974, Romania gave us Nadia Comaneci. This year, we'll see another exciting Romanian gymnast, Katarina Zabo. 1976 it was for Ripley. Nadia, of course. We can only wait and see if, if Katarina is as dynamic as Nadia. Rwanda. It's been rumoured all week that Nadia would play some role in this the opening of the 23rd Olympiad. Nadia Comaneci has been in Los Angeles, as has Muhammad Ali. Lots of stories going around about who will carry the flame. I'm glad that chap from Rwanda is not running in the 100 metres final. I'd have trouble getting that name out, I think. <laughs> Did you catch that? <laughs> well, from San Marino come a team of about 30 athletes. It cost them $50,000 to get here, and 40000 of those dollars were donated by a businessman in Los Angeles who happens to live in a suburb here called San Marino. Saudis could afford to send a team practically anywhere in the world. Big in numbers. Their yeah, traditional costume. Being led today by their shooter, Alain Naz Safat. And getting a big, big cheer. Now this is an interesting story. Their flag bearer is Tieno Bal. I think that's the way to say it. He's a free pistol shooter. He's a soldier. He was the last athlete to leave Senegal for the games. And so he brought the flag with him. Got a great 400 meter hurdler too. El Hajj Amadou Diaba. El Hajj because he's been to Mecca. He started off as a high jumper was very successful, competed in the World Cup and the World Thank Student you. Games and now runs the 400 metre hurdles. Should make the final. The race has been dominated by Edwin Moses for so long. Of course, we'll see Moses later on in the ceremony as well. From the exciting holiday islands of the Seychelles, a boxing and track and field team. They're led onto the field by their 100 and 200 metre sprinter, Dennis Rose. Sierra Leone. It's a centre field. About three quarters full. Over a hundred nations. Already entered the stadium. It's about ten to seven in Los Angeles at the moment. I'd guess the temperature about 23 or 24 degrees. Could not have asked for a better day to open the 23rd Olympiad. By the same token, it's hard to expect an athlete to stand out there, wait in the aisles, wait in the wings, if you like, and then stand out there for two hours, then go through the traffic jams to get home and compete tomorrow. You can understand why the, the athletes who are competing tomorrow don't march. They'd be, they'd be foolish to. Singapore delegation. Only about a dozen. It's the first time at the Olympics for the Solomon Islands, too. Not very many in the team. Somalia. All track and field people, Somalia. dressed for the occasion, Abdi Baal Abdi. He's an 800 and 1500 metre runner, so he'll be rubbing shoulders with Mike Hillard and Pat Scammell over the next fortnight. Spain. Home of the 
president, of course, of the Olympic Committee, Juan Antonio Samaranch. The Spaniards won one gold, three silver, two bronze medals in Moscow. A number of finalists chances. There's one of their gold medalists, in fact, the man who won it in Moscow in yachting, Alejandro Bascal. Speaking of Bascal, that's the name of their champion 1500 meter runner. He's likely to make the final if he's healthy. Of course, the Spanish were host to a great sporting festival two years ago, the World Cup. Perhaps the only event that can come close to this in terms of excitement and interest worldwide. in swimming, in weightlifting, and in sailing. And leading the Sudanese is Abdu Alatif. He's their boxing coach. He competed back in Munich in 1972. Sudan have got a very good 400 meter runner. Earl Hassan Kashif or Earl Kashif Hassan. It's hard to know which sometimes, He's both ways. He won the World Surinam. Student Games back in 79. The country of Suriname didn't have a very happy Olympic debut. It was in Rome in 1960. They, they sent a single 800 meter runner, Wimasayas. Well, he was told that the heats would be run in the afternoon, so he bobbed up in the afternoon. And he was told that the heats will run in the morning. So he missed them and went home without One setting foot on the track. It took them eight years before they recovered from that and sent a team to Mexico. But fortunately for us, they're here today. To Swaziland. Home of a half a million people. They'll be competing in swimming, boxing, and track and field. Only about a half a dozen of them. Sweden. Big cheer for the Swedes. One of the few countries that can boast as having hosted the Olympic Games. Spencer, this is his third games. He's a rower, very strong rower. Another of the Swedish favourites will be in the free pistol shooting, Ragnar Skanika. He's been training in Australia, as, has, as have many of the shooters. Uh, they've chosen South Australia mainly because the climate approximates the weather in Los Angeles at this time of the year. The really big teams in terms of numbers of Swedes, over 200, and they're represented in 18 sports. like the Swiss bank. They do indeed. They they go into their sport wholeheartedly. Switzerland's the home of the great gymnast, George Might. He dedicated his life to the sport, as do these modern-day athletes. It's interesting, Bob, that Australia, with just 15 million people, has so many athletes that come to the Games. With, in terms of numerical strength, one of the strongest. Very few countries with over 200 representatives. The Swiss look a very big delegation. They are, yet they number just about 156. And the girl you just saw carrying the flag, Christiana Stuckelberger, won gold for her country in the equestrian events in, in Montreal in 76. Syria. When one thinks of Syria at the Games, you maybe think of wrestling strongman sports and having a look at these boys walking out onto the arena I think we're pretty well right again in 1984 that's not a wrestler bearing the flag I'll be surprised I think he was a sprinter mate Chinese Taipei well while North 
north and south korea couldn't get their act together and agree to appear at the same venue there's been no such problem this year between what was formerly taiwan and mainland china flag bearer duam lee he's a decathlete and the long jumper much smaller delegation than the people's republic of china about a quarter in number understandably so This is, Peter this is Peter Richardson, ANZ banker on his way to work in London. Peter is one of 300 people who staff the ANZ London office, an office that is part of Australia's foremost international bank. With more than 250 overseas offices, the ANZ Bank has kept pace with the growth of Australian business internationally. The ANZ was one of the first Australian banks to open foreign currency accounts for Australian depositors. The ANZ was the first Australian bank to join the small group of internationals who form the powerful European exchange market. The ANZ is the only Australian private bank represented on the recently formed London Financial Futures Exchange. Today, through the expertise of people like Peter Richardson, the ANZ moves vast amounts of money through the international market. ANZ International Banking, assisting Australian industry worldwide because, as Peter Richardson likes to say, the best bank is the bank that serves you best. Solomons go bonkers on bourbons. How about a bourbon for under $40 a meter? Bonkers, but true. This Woolrich bourbon is down to $39.50 a meter. Or check this 80-20 bourbon at a crazy $49.50 a meter. These must be Australia's best bourbon buys. Choose from Australia's biggest in-stock bourbon range and save up to $625 on the average home. You'll go bonkers over the bourbon prices at Solomons now. You always pay less at Solomons. Imagination soars excitement, drama, laughter, and thrills of the movies. Join us 1.30 Monday, Wednesday, and Friday afternoons here on Golden West Television for That's Hollywood, where behind the scenes is exposed with its unique combination of talent, technology, and fun. That's Hollywood, 1.30 Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays on Golden West Television for your entertainment. Tunisia, some 30 in number. The man I always remember from Tunisia is Mohamed Gamoudi, who won the 5,000 gold medal back in 1968 in Mexico. He was in that famous 10,000 metres that Billy Mills won in 1964 with Ron Clark in Tokyo, when he ran second. Got a pretty good runner too this Very time, nice. Mohamed Aliouni. Good 800 metre run, we should do well. We'll get to the semis. Here's another country very strong in the strongman sports, particularly wrestling. Flag bearer, distance runner. Must be 7,000 athletes in the centre there. Perhaps not that many because not all of them marching today, but wouldn't be much change out of six thousand, Bruce. Uganda. Again, traditionally strong in boxing. Their most famous gold medalist was back in Munich in the 400 meter hurdles when John Aki Bua broke the world record. He was forced to flee the country not all that long after when Idi Amin was in control. Made a reappearance in Moscow in 1980 but has retired very very strong in boxing the Ugandan team United Arab Emirates
most of those athletes entered in the track and field events. He's the team captain. He's also a relay runner. Well, they won two World Olympic... Uh, they won, yes, they won two World uh, Soccer Cups. That was earlier on, and uh, they were pretty good in uh, Olympic soccer back in the 20s. They're not playing football in these games. Strong in number. And represented in five sports of the 23rd Olympia. Caracas last year. Capital of Venezuela played host to the Pan American Games. Turned out to be a controversial games. The number of athletes being suspended. And they return positive swabs. And that man there can really run last year he defeated Sebastian Coe over 800 meters at Gateshead Steve Cram came along and beat them both William Wuiki and he'll be running in the 800 meters at these games has been given the honor of carrying the flag now, there are two Virgin Islands represented at the games the British Virgin Islands and the US Virgin Islands this is the US Virgin Islands and you'll see in a moment the flag of the US Virgin Islands bears the American Eagle. Certainly a lot bigger country than the British Virgin Islands. They have a population of some 120,000 as opposed to the British Virgin Islands, the population of only 10,000. The last carrying the flag was a swimmer. That's some view. That's high in the sky. I hate to think how many Western Samoa. meters up over this sea of colour and excitement of the Colosseum. First time for Western Samoa at the Games. Ayani is a boxer. Looks like a light heavyweight. 